Hey everyone, this is Lindsay Lopez. I'd like to welcome you to No Bones About It, an orthopedic podcast. This is your podcast to learn all about orthopedic injuries and interventions from the experts at the Jordan Young Institute. Before we get started, don't forget you can view the videos that go along with this podcast on Jordan Young Institute's social media pages and on their website at www.jordan-younginstitute.com. Now let's get started with episode two, everything you wanna know about anterior hip replacements. Welcome to episode two of No Bones About It, everything you want to know about anterior hip replacements. Today, I'm joined by Dr. Joseph Gondusky from the Jordan Young Institute. Dr. Gondusky is a board certified orthopedic surgeon with subspecialty fellowship training in hip replacement, total knee replacement, and partial knee replacement. He has extensive training in anterior approach, total hip replacement, minimally invasive surgery, computer assisted surgery, and complex revision joint replacement. He is also a former commander in the United States Navy. Dr. Gondusky, thanks for joining me today. Let's jump right into learning about anterior hip replacements. So first question, who is a candidate for a hip replacement? Uh, Hip replacement patients really are patients that are debilitated by uh, hip arthritis or other hip conditions that destroy the hip joint who have failed non-operative measures. So basically, Things like anti-inflammatory medicines and a walking aids like canes and activity modifications, and weight loss, and all of those things are not working. Hip replacement is the only way to fix an arthritic hip. So you can do things to decrease inflammation. So you can stop running if you're a runner and decrease the inflammation hip. But to fix it, uh, an arthritic hip when it's at, at sort of last resort, uh, a hip replacement is needed as the only solution. Okay. What is the anterior approach for hip replacement surgery? Uh, the anterior approach is, is a approach to the hip joint that uses an incision in the front of the hip. So uh, there's multiple different ways to get to the hip joint. Uh, the end product of a hip replacement is basically the same from an x-ray standpoint. So when you get a hip replacement done, the, the x-ray will look similar no matter how you get there. It's really just the soft tissue approach you use. So those approaches are either the anterior approach or the lateral approach or the posterolateral approach. And so uh, the anterior approach uses an incision in front to get there, and we're able to spread muscles apart to get to the hip joint, separate the tissues, get down to the hip joint, and perform the hip replacement uh, in a uh, a minimally invasive way. Okay, okay. How is the anterior approach different from the traditional approach to hip replacement surgery? It's been sort of an interesting evolution in in hip replacement in general. So uh, 10 plus years ago, the posterior approach was the most common replacement to the hip. And these days, probably about 35 to 40 percent of hip replacements are done anterior. So it's actually fairly common surgery now. It's been gradually increasing over the past decade in terms of uh, the use of that approach. Um, The anterior approach basically utilizes that incision in the front to get to the hip joint. Um, And the really scientific difference in terms of studies that show differences between the approaches and how people do with hip replacement show that people tend to have a quicker early recovery with the anterior approach, which means that basically people's ability to get off canes and walkers and walk longer distances early in the post-operative recovery period and have less pain in the post-operative early period tends to be less with the anterior approach. Uh, the other uh, advantage uh, tends to be a lower dislocation rate. So if you look at dislocation rates historically in hip replacement, uh, the anterior approach seems to have a lower dislocation rate. Um, uh, and that is the, yeah, the main sort of uh, advantages that are sort of scientifically based. Um, the other things that I, that I really like about it is because the patient's on their back and we use a special table, we can use live x-ray for the surgery. And so it's very easy to get an x-ray in that's sort of part of the surgery with, with the hip replacement with an anterior approach as opposed to other approaches where that's actually much more difficult because generally the patient is on their side. So there's a lot of things we can do with that. We can really get people's leg lengths directly back, utilizing software during the surgery to recreate that uh, that leg length and anatomy. Uh, And so that's another sort of more subtle advantage it's more of a technical aspect of of the replacement case. Okay, okay. So who is a candidate for uh, the anterior approach? Uh, really anybody who needs a hip replacement. So, you know, people that meet indications for a hip replacement, uh, really everyone is, is, a, is a candidate. Um, uh, there is an, a, a learning curve associated with the surgery. And so, you know, after uh, sort of doing more and more uh, anterior push hip replacements, in general, surgeons are more comfortable tackling more difficult cases. So, you know, uh, experts at anterior pro surgery are able to do every hip replacement candidate through an anterior approach. Um, I teach surgeons nationally about how to do uh, hip replacement, anterior approach hip replacements, and publish literature on, say, with studies on, on anterior approach hip replacement. So uh, I'm comfortable doing 100% of hip replacements through that approach. 
Um, other surgeons might want to you know, try it. Uh, patients that might be a little bit easier anatomically initially. Okay. So you've alluded to this a little bit, uh, but are there situations where you would choose uh, one procedure over another for a patient needing a hip replacement? The um, Generally, no. So if you have a uh, hip arthritis in a patient electively, like so somebody comes into the office with hip pain and hip arthritis, it's going to be a total hip replacement. It's really the only surgical option that would make any sense these days. Um, for people that have a hip fracture, fall and break their hip, then sometimes a partial hip replacement makes sense. But that's generally reserved for older patients with hip fractures. Um, and so um, generally a total hip replacement is what's, uh, what's needed. Okay. Okay. So one last question. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about the length of hospital stay following an anterior hip replacement and, and what the recovery looks like for patients? Yeah, great question. That's kind of one of the fun things to talk about with hip replacement because over the past 10 years or so, um, the biggest difference and change with hip and knee replacement outcomes and recovery has been with recovery period and the ability to control pain and improve people's early function. And so changes like medicines and nerve blocks and good anesthesia, and modern techniques to control pain and inflammation have let people really mobilize quicker and have less pain and discomfort than they did early. So that has subsequently shortened our length of stay in the hospital. It's decreased our need for strong narcotic pain medicines, in which case, especially for anterior approach hip replacement, it's not uncommon for people to, be, to need little to no narcotic pain medicine afterwards. And usually by four weeks, people can start doing every single thing they want to do, including getting back to more uh, aggressive active stuff. So um, the ability to kind of get rid of canes and walkers and things like that uh, much, much quicker than it used to be. Okay. Yeah. It sounds like hip replacements have uh, come a long way. Uh, well, Dr. Gondusky, thank you so much for all the information you've shared. Uh, super informative, very interesting. Um, it was great to learn a little bit more about anterior hip replacements. Yeah, it was great talking to you. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Okay. That does it for this episode. Thanks so much for joining us today to talk to Dr. Joseph Gondusky about anterior hip replacements. Don't forget to check out the awesome video of this podcast at www.jordan-younginstitute.com and like follow JYI on Facebook, Instagram, and on LinkedIn. Also, if you're experiencing any pain, please call the Jordan Young Institute at 757-490-4802 or visit www.jordan-younginstitute.com to request an appointment. I can't wait for episode three of No Bones About It. I hope you'll join us. Have a great one.